So on my infinite wisdom, I decided to buy a Ranwen Park BMW N5 on Facebook Marketplace because I don't have enough problems as it is. And I didn't buy the regular Degular M5. I bought the V10 M5 that sounds like an F1 car, but is plagued with reliability issues. And I don't want to get into those right now because people swear by these cars and say things like, oh, there's no such thing as a bad E60 M5, only bad E60 M5 owners. And they honestly sound like Chihuahua owners defending their dog's behavior. Well, he's only bit one kid, but I heard it's the German Hellcat and a pretty close competitor to the E55 AMG, so I had to try one out. Well, I got the full BMW experience. The car definitely didn't start a run as advertised, so no surprises there. But after I got the lights on, it was filled with errors, and the most fun part, it was also filled with water and mold onto the back seat, which turned out to be because of a clogged sunroof drain. And after we clear that out, no more sunroof drain issues, but the car still did not start. But that's not the worst car I regret buying the most this year. There's one far, far worse that I lost $35,000 against my own home, which is not easy. But you know what is easy? Making a website with Squarespace. It's easy to claim a domain or URL like www.nevertrustacarthatranwinpark.com or wwwthe 500 articles I read about this car's reliability should have prepared me.com. Then you can get a custom site that matches your style and enthusiasm. Check out these page templates because they'll make your web page look better than the look people give you when you tell them that you own a V10 BMW. Head to squarespace.com slash rich rebuilds to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code in the description box below. Shout out to Squarespace for making platforms for people's passions no matter what the cost. Now, before I get into the worst financial mistake of my career, let's get into this second worst buy, the BMW M5 that I was under the impression that it was going to be easy. Let's get into the logistics of the things that I found and why I think it might have to go. Okay, so we were making really good progress, and by really good progress, I mean nice, slow, and steady progress on this M5 interior. Oh, yeah, the rear carpet's in. John Ross is here helping me. He has experience with M5s. Sure. Oh, well, M6s, actually. It's same, same. Yeah, same thing. Uh, they have the same seats in the front, too? I think the seats are the same, but the doors are definitely different. Yeah, the doors are definitely longer in the uh, the M6. But yeah, we're making good progress. Uh, that, this uh, carpet is cleaned. I still have to remove this, because that still has mold on it. These were, kids were in this car. Uh, and I don't know if they throw up mold or something, <laughs> but there's, we gotta, you know, get rid of this thing. But it's come along pretty well so far. There's a lot of hardware in the back. It looks kind of confusing, but it's not because I labeled everything. This one says M5 undercarriage. It looks like it says carnage. That's the M5 rear seat bag. So everything is pretty much labeled. It's just a matter of putting everything back in its place and uh, watching John Ross work. Nice yeah. job, man. Good technique, by the way. Thank you. Great technique. All right. I love it. All right, we're making great progress so far. Uh, John Ross and I. He's a great helper, by the way. Great companion to have you here, man. You wanna just move here? What do you think? The carpets are back in, speaker grills are back in. Now John Ross is working on cleaning that center console. Center console is clean, and now I'm gonna do some work in here, cleaning this up and getting that cigarette butt out of there. It's amazing just how dirty this car was. So, look at it there. All right, so John Ross and I are here in this cramped quarters. Can you pick that up? I wanna make sure everything's plugged in underneath that. Okay, I can't it's, quite it's pick lot. it up, but I can check for you. Okay, cool. I wanna make sure all the things are plugged in there because if one thing isn't plugged in, you know how that's gonna go. Yep, take it back out. All right, I think you're good. All right, uh, anything on the front? Oh, how about that connector right there? Is that for the- uh, Cigarette lighter. Cigarette lighter. How about this one back here? The one on the way back. We're not gonna worry about that one. Okay, sounds good. The last time we left off, it was giving a crank and no start. It's still giving the same issues now. I went ahead and I took off this cover for the ECU and other fuses that are back here. It looks like someone was in here before. A lot of these are loose and not snapped into the appropriate places. Uh, what I wanna do next is make sure that there's still continuity going to these wires because it looks like there was still uh, some rodent evidence back there. So I wanna make sure that these wires didn't get chewed up. I'm gonna pull out the PCM, make sure there's no pins bent or missing because someone's definitely been in here before. And I learned something about BMWs, in order to properly troubleshoot the car and have it read all the fault codes, the seats should be plugged in. Now, not all cars are like that, but I'm assuming there is some CAN data that goes through the seats. Uh, these seats have the active bolsters, so as you turn, uh, these kind of go in left and right. So I went ahead and I plugged in both the driver and the passenger seats. Going in the back, 
took a little bit more of the rear apart. Didn't see any evidence of water back here. I think for the most part, this was just uh, the faulty sunroof drains. I looked in the bottom of this battery, still no water under there either, which is, I guess is a good sign. What I wanna do next is I wanna get this car in the air. I wanna drain the oil and I wanna check the oil for any particles. I hope it's not rod bearings, but uh, taking samples of the oil will definitely tell me what I need to know. Once I drain it into a clear cup or a clear container of some sort, I'm gonna get a magnet, swirl the magnet around to see if there's any metal shavings in it. You look, I found something. This is the uh, spark plug tool that they left in the car. So that's mine now. Right now I'm draining the oil from the oil filter itself and I'm draining it into a separate container. I didn't want to drain it into the larger container because just in case there's any metal you know, uh, filings in there, I wanted to make sure it was a smaller container so I could pick them up easier. I already scanned this large bucket with a, uh, with a big magnet, didn't find anything. Uh, but putting things in a smaller bucket makes it a lot easier to search for things. It almost seems like the uh, metal in the bucket, or it, the oil in the bucket rather, seems a little bit thicker. Uh, I guess we're gonna find out very soon the reason for that. All right, let's see. It's funny. Wait, am I crazy, guys? Are there little, little sparkly things in this? Take a look at it. Like, are there little, like, glistening pieces of what looks like metal? All right, so now, here's the interesting part about things, is that, remember how we were seeing sparkles in here? I knew I saw something. Can't really tell, but that's copper. That's all copper in there. Show it around. Some gold in there. So, I mean, this doesn't look like it's great. Uh, but I've heard some things where people say this might not be that big of a deal, but it's definitely, something's breaking down in the engine for this. And I know the uh, rod bearings have copper in them. Uh, I don't know what the Blackstone oil analysis would say, but it would probably say high copper content and I could physically see the copper in this. So I guess we're going to, uh, uh, I'm gonna drain this, clean this up, uh, fill it with fresh oil and literally pray. Okay, so here's the old trusty uh, BMW N5. We just did the oil change on it using this very expensive oil. This uses very expensive oil. This liquid molly isn't exactly cheap. I really wanted to use the cheap stuff, but it's a BMW M5 uh, V10, and I heard these are very finicky. So I didn't want to put anything that was cheap or that would lead to any major issues. Speaking of major issues, I'm not really thrilled with the amount of copper that I saw at the bottom of that oil filter. A lot of people said it was normal-ish. I don't really think it's it's normal, but people seem to think that it's normal to have, you know, an inch of copper sludge built up uh, in the oil filter. Uh, I think it might be the rod bearings because as those wear, uh, copper kind of circles to the engine. But uh, maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a BMW specialist in, in the least bit, so I am worried about that. Uh, what we're going to do now is hopefully the very first startup of this vehicle. Uh, when we were troubleshooting it before. We were getting uh, pressure to the rails, meaning the fuel pump was working, but for some reason, the injectors were not firing. Uh, we're not really sure why that was. Uh, we were trying to troubleshoot various issues uh, within the computer, clearing a few codes to see if that, that actually fixes it. Uh, while Joey works on the... Joey, tell me more about the Volkswagen, Joey. What are you working on right now? I am building... I hate this BMW. Bars. Traction bars. Okay. Um, basically, we're getting a lot of axle wrap under yeah. load. Mm-hmm. Uh, because these leaf springs really aren't made to do anything. They're they're just supposed to be like a trailer. Now we're actually putting a load on it. It's forcing the axle up. Mm -hmm. We'll end we'll up breaking this drive shaft. No, we don't want to do that. We don't want that. It's a little too expensive. Right, yes. We're on the so. whole truck, so. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> this is the most expensive part of this whole truck right seriously. there, that drive shaft, right. Yeah, so, okay, cool. Doing a little good, man. Yeah. Nice job. All right, back to this terrible BMW. Anyways, so uh, we were having some voltage issues before, uh, and currently it's using uh, this old Duralast battery. And uh, this obviously is not the right size for the car. And, um, you know, it's very small. It's only 650 
uh, cold cranking amps, but we definitely wanted to upgrade to a much better battery. So we upgraded to the anti gravity battery. So it also has a really, really, really cool features. So it has built in jump starting, so you never have to attach jumper cables to this. And it actually has two really cool features. One, there's a remote to it, so you could actually jump start the battery from the inside of your car. And if you don't have the remote, there's a physical button on the battery. So you never have to go outside the car. You, you never have to get wet and jump start the car in the rain. You don't have to flag someone down and say, hey, can you give me a jump? You have it all from the palm of your hand. This battery as well is also 60 to 70% lighter than this lead acid battery. This is a smaller lead acid battery and this one has twice the cold cranking amps that this one does. Matter of fact, I didn't tell you about this car yet, but there's a Porsche here. I'm not gonna give you too many details on it, but I also have an anti-gravity battery uh, waiting for this uh, Porsche here as well. So you're probably gonna see these anti-gravity batteries in more of the cars, McLaren, the other 911, the Clown Shoe, the Z06. So if any car that sits uh, for a long time, like a lot of these cars do, you'll be seeing it. Okay. Yay, seats work. Okay. All righty. Okay, ready for this? Joey? There goes nothing. So it does start, but the engine is making a tapping sound and it could be a stuck lifter and I'm not really sure, but I spoke with M539 Restorations per your suggestions and he suggested driving it to see if it becomes unstuck. You guys tell me, I'm not really sure if it's worth it or not, but I'm open to suggestions. Do you guys think it's worth pursuing? I paid about seven grand for it and most of the ones I've been seeing on Facebook Marketplace under 10 have rod bearing issues or are part outs. You let me know what you guys think. It very well could be a Vanos issue, like a solenoid or a pump. Now, the obvious answer is to look at the codes, but it's throwing literally every single code, including Vanos. So you guys tell me, and I'm not opposed to offers, by the way, at this point. So if you want to shoot me an offer on it, let me know via email. But anyways, I have to prep the Sprinter van to go to its new home. I could actually use the money at this point because I've been losing so much money left and right on cars. Won't you join us in prepping the van for its final goodbye? Jeez, Linda. What? All right, now, now you got So the water's on this side, yeah? Yeah, so the water's on that side. That's what you already showered there, remember? You had a shower well, there. The, the water is here, but I don't know if you guys did some weird loop de thing and it's on this side. Linda, I don't you used the, know. you already used the van already. Let's just fill it with water. The water's on this side, please. And, Where's, that's, and that's the vent right there. How do I know if it's full? It's, does, gonna, it's gonna shoot all over you. You know, I'm doing your job for you. You're just on your phone the whole time. It's filling up right now. What do you mean you're doing my job? Well, you okay. Are you vlogging this? What do you mean? Ah! Jeez. Aggressive! I'm... We don't need you here anymore. Oh. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> this is my shop now. Back up. Go away. Too close. You can't even get it in. Look at that. It's <laughs> alive on everything. Oh, it's not going to fall on me. Okay. Oh, wait, but... Just wiggle her on out. Okay. There you go. I thought that this was gonna. What the? 
<laughs> okay. Let's try it one more time. Hey. What are you this is heavy. I thought this was a magnet. <laughs> Whoop! Go ahead. She's good. She is. Nice. Yep, strip Nailed them all. It. You go ahead and strip those? Yep. Cool. That you, way they can did, never fix it. You didn't strip the other two in the back. What do you mean? You no, this one's in crooked. Okay. This one is in too much. We're good. Okay, cool. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Linda. Wait, we need to test the electrical outlets now. Can you plug? Can you? Okay, stop for a second. Stop. Are you capable of plugging that in to that circuit? There is a ledge there. Do not hit your head. I'm going to see you when I do. Do not hit your head. Finally going to get paid. Please do not hit your head. <laughs> and smack. Uh, oh, wow, be... they also have USB? Yeah, they do have USB, yeah. Oh! Joey. Price just went up. Mm-hmm. Okay, we are plugged in one. Didn't get electrocuted. Yay. Table goes up. Are you not impressed? Uh, my powers. <laughs> there you go. It's like cool and stuff. That's pretty cool. You know. <laughs> there you go. It's yeah. Okay, that works. Just shut that off. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm really gonna miss this van. This thing was, it's a beautiful piece of engineering. It's art on the inside and I'm really gonna miss it. And it's a shame that a lot of us didn't have the opportunity to use it as an actual camper. Uh, Linda definitely didn't want it. It wasn't her style, but it kinda is what it is. And I feel like a lot of us really missed out on the opportunity to, uh, to really spend some time in something very cool. And uh, I don't want you guys to miss out on things, especially the biggest Ridge Wallet sale of the year. Guys, stop giving bad gifts, okay? People will remember that you gave them a bad gift. Give them a Ridge Wallet. No more George Costanza wallets with that really thick padding that no one cares about with all of your cards in it. Get a nice, sleek, slim wallet. Look at this one, okay? It's carbon fiber, the same one I've been using for many years now. And don't forget to shop their holiday sale by going to ridge.com slash so richfreebills and get up to 30% off through December 20th. And if you use my link, you can enter your email or phone number for a free chance when a Ridge bundle worth four grand, no purchase necessary. You can get the new Hyperline wallet and a key case if you like loud things or the new ceramic powder wallets or any of the great classics. Go check it out right now. I think it's a really awesome thing uh, to give for this holiday season. But um, yeah, it's 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 really a shame. I think it's uh, it's it really stinks that, you know, it's gonna go, but uh, I think it's gonna go to a really good home. So, um. It's been real, Van.